A year ago, I made a video where I showed how it was quite easy to actually cover the surface of a solar panel with a layer of standard silicon sealant. And now that a year has passed, out of all the lights that I covered, it, the silicon looks fine, but the light itself has failed, so I thought it'd be good to actually see why it failed. All the other ones are absolutely fine. But I also thought, before I go ahead and do that, let's do a recap on what's involved in putting the silicon on, because it does appear to work. So this is a standard a Poundland style lamp. This one is uh, notable for having colour changing LEDs in it. They sort of they flash and pulse through the colours. It's uh, it's an interesting effect because it's current limited by the simple circuitry that's providing basically just the current for one LED. It means that they tend to be a bit sort of random in the way they, they work. It's the, the intensity tends to modulate up and down quite a lot. Things worthy of note, with the globes, plastic globes, not the glass ones, you do get glass ones uh, a bit hard of that. With the plastic globes, I recommend drilling a hole in the very end of them or getting a soldier iron and melting a hole in the end, but not with your best iron. And that will uh, allow any moisture that builds up inside them to drain out. It makes a huge difference in the life expectancy of these lights. The approach to putting the silicon on, it uses a standard polythene bag, or polyethylene, as they like to say in some countries. So you start off by cutting a little square out of the plastic, and this is effectively, because it was a bag, this is two squares. So now we've got a couple of squares of the plastic, the polythene. I shall just tuck those out of the way. And you clean the surface. Now this works best on metal fittings or the ones that have got a chrome plating on them. It doesn't work so well on the plastic ones because the silicon doesn't grab onto the plastic so well. I've got a choice here. I could use uh, the red scratchy pencil. I'm going to clean the, uh, the chrome here to make it slightly more abrasive. So I've got the choice of the fiberglass one. Let's try that out in fact. Oh, that's, that's working really well. So, fiberglass pencil it is. The other ones are brass and steel. So let's say uh, use the fiberglass pencil since it works. All I'm going to do is abrade the surface up slightly. It's to give the silicon something to bite into and seal onto the chrome plating with. The chrome plating is the sort of usual conductive chrome plating on metal. So that's it completely non chromey now. In hindsight, that's probably why it looks kind of matte. It's the it's mainly the sort of lack of chrominess now. And I'm going to wipe that off with a piece of tissue, paper towel, to uh, remove any sort of debris on that. And to put this silicon on, I will use this uh, tube here. You put a bead on about the size of a pea. It's a sort of trial and error. Once you've done that, you place your polythene layer over the top of it, centrally, and I'll zoom down for this so you can actually see, I'm just going to press that to make it stick. So let's zoom down in that a bit. I'm just going to squish it out, spread it out from that bit in the middle, so uh, it basically creates a sort of even layer over the solar panel and onto the surrounding chrome. So it does take a, a little bit of effort to actually get it fairly even, but having said that, it doesn't really have to be that even, does it? Last year I tested it, I measured the output of the silicon solar panel, the silicon, yes, silicon solar panel, before and after I'd applied the silicon sealant on top. And it was the output was the same, so that's that done. All I'm going to do now, I'm going to hinge this little uh, hook up and I'm going to hang it up to cure, and tomorrow once it's cured, this will literally just peel off. I'm not going to peel it off now because it will actually be sticking to the silicon, which is quite soft. But in the morning, this will be very much like this one, where it's formed that... Well, let's unscrew this. It's formed that layer over it. And that has lasted very well. That is a year later. It's looking fine. I'd like to test the current from this as well. So I'm just going to hook this up out of the way so I don't get silicon everywhere. Let's hook it up there. Okay, it is hooked up out of the way. And let's find out what went wrong with this one. I don't think it's corrosion, but we'll find out when I open it. So this one is just not working completely. Where is the screwdriver? It could well be corrosion. If water has got in from underneath the circuitry, it could just be a mess of corrosion. That's the curse of solar lights. They, they do tend to corrode quite badly. 
That wire off is probably something to do with it. Why has it come off the battery? That was a new battery I'd put in as well. That's what that little yellow tag will indicate, the fact I'd put a new battery in it. Um, the back of that battery has gone very black looking. Is that just corrosion or is it some chemical leakage? It looks like something has perhaps seeped, but I would have thought the chemical out the battery would have come from this side, but maybe it's just seeped its way around and corroded the wire. The inside looks dry and clean. The circuitry looks immaculate. It's very clean. So let's uh, change that battery. That's the good start. And we'll see if it kicks it back into life. I'd also like to find out what the short circuit current of that cell is, but I can do that by measuring with a meter across the battery charging contacts wires. I do have spare batteries. You can buy them in bulk on eBay if you wish. Uh, the little uh, nickel metal hydride button cells for the solar lights. This is not ideal. It's just that wee bit thin for the setting that my... It's this usual. It's this cheapy Chinese product wire that's super thin. It does look that's corroded at the end. I wonder what caused that. It looks as though it could have been a chemical from the battery. So last year, I was getting about 25 milliamps. I shall put a link to that video, in fact. Um, so I would expect, even through the diode, let's use a cheap emitter, I would expect to get round about that current. If I hold this up to the light, is it degraded much? It's possibly degraded a little. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, look at that. It's absolutely fine. Oh, blimey, it's higher. How, how's that? <laughs> right, okay. Uh, so the solar panel output is not degraded. It's got plenty there to charge the battery. In fact, you know what? That may be what happened, because last year was one of the sunniest years I've ever known here. It was just unbelievably sunny. The adhesive on this captain tape has, uh, has just gone. It's just dried out. Hmm, could that be a reason? It's, nah. Uh, let's get another battery and put it in. But uh, we had the most incredible summer and the output of these tiny little solar panels, they're only about 20 millimetres square. You wouldn't think it'd be more than a few milliamps. But the output is in sunlight, well that, that's just holding it up to a 20 watt LED light and it was putting out a peak of 30 milliamps there which is just ludicrous. So let's lift this up. Let's put some solder on these. I shall bring the solder iron in, I shall find some solder and we shall replace the cell and see if that reinstates it. I should actually charge this cell up first, shouldn't I? But not to worry. So I shall put some solder on the cell on either side, noting that side is now very hot. I'll cut off the little lugs because uh, they're just going to potentially short out against stuff. I want to wrap this in tape again. So shall I show, cut off those little lugs? I shall get these wires, I shall twist them and put some solder on them if the corrosion hasn't made them unsolderable. Sometimes that happens when the wires uh, get old and sort of like the water soaks up the end of them, they won't take solder so easily. It's taken solder. Maybe it's just sitting on the surface, you just never know. Is that one taken solder? That one has not convincingly taken solder. You know what? I might just replace these wires. Is that a good idea? Yes, it probably is because the wires themselves look as though they've uh, copped it. So they are soldered there, so I can just tack the wires. What is that on top of that? Have I put a seal sealant in this? Oh, uh, you know what? That's why this looks so clean. I sprayed that with lacquer as well, didn't I? Or, more likely, I painted this with nail varnish. Right, tell you what, I'll just keep those wires then, and I'll just crop them down further to the point I find some clean copper. If I find some clean copper. 
I shall maybe even just scrape the wires and see if I can get through the tarnish on the outside so I can get the solder to stick. See, the white one, which is the one that came off, looks okay. And it was taking solder before. Let's use the... Uh, which uh, pen is the fiberglass? It's not that one. Let's try and abrade the uh, the wire and get the get it to take uh, solder. That'll be slightly out of focus down there, probably. It's okay because I've kind of got this focus set up about here. That's not uh, cleaning at all. You know, I could just stop faffing around. I could just do the sensible thing and go and hunt some bits of wire out and solder them on. I shall do that. One moment, please. And I'm back with bits of wire. Let's, uh, at the risk of just completely going out of focus, let's try and focus down onto there. That looks pretty good. Actually, I'll just stay there. Will I? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. So I've got the white wire from the battery going under here. Let's uh, just chop that off. Or I could pull it out... Uh, when I melt the solder on the top. No, let's uh, just do that. I'm going to just carefully take the uh, lacquer off the top of that. The heat will take it off as well. That is actually going to the... Oh, you know what? That is going to the switch terminal anyway. So I'll just solder it directly onto the big terminal there. So let's wet that. So that's going to be the positive. Mmm, the smell of burning lacquer. I should just wipe that. It smells a bit like vomit, actually. That's not nice. That probably means it contains some noxious chemical. Well, it's not got me yet. So I shall put the positive onto there. I have an ambient soundtrack in the background, as well as the dehumidifier. Just in case you think it's another huge storm in the middle of the Irish Sea, which is... You know what, usually there's a big storm in the middle of the Irish Sea. Uh, let's see if we can get this wire off now. Why is that wire not coming off? There it goes. And I shall put some more solder on that. And solder the new black wire on for the battery. Let's uh, not pick up the old black wire, that would be annoying since it was the one that was a bit corroded anyway. And I shall flow some solder onto that and then reflow it onto the existing solder on the pad there, keeping it well away from the positive. That looks pretty good. Right. I also took the opportunity to bump a little bit of charge into this. So this uh, new cell has a little bit of charge in it, not a huge amount. So let's flow some solder onto these connections. I am intrigued to see what went wrong with this. I may take the sleeve off and see if it goes all the way around. I will do that. It will answer questions. It's possible it's just been overcharged just by that zealous summer. A summer that caused problems here in the Isle of Man. They actually had to consider there might be a water shortage. Which is ridiculous on the island, man, because though we've got plenty of what we call aquifers, reservoirs, uh, it's so rare that you have a summer with a lack of rain. Last year was unusual. This is working already. The LEDs are lighting up. That's looking great. Um, I could, you know, I could wrap some of this posh captain tape round, or I could just get, I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not, I could get some sellotape and wrap it round it, because you know, certainly it's probably going to remain stickier than the captain tape did. Let's use sellotape, that's really professional. It's mainly to stop it shorting against anything inside the case. I'll put a wee bit over the end as well. Mmm, fancy. You can also use this for mains connections. No, don't use it for mains connections. I've come across that in the past. Right, so I'm going to stuff this in here now. Uh, the temptation is to put more nail varnish over those connections since it clearly worked so well. That is immaculate inside. 
it's actually failed, presumably, just too much sunshine. That makes a refreshing change. That doesn't happen often in the UK. So let's get this back together. Pop the screws in. Solar panel's definitely working because it's detecting sunlight and it's turning the lights off. But then I know the solar panel's working because it was just putting out a shit ton of power before uh, quite a lot of current. They're really impressive. They must have evolved the amorphous silicon panels. Those little brown ones are a sort of coating that's deposited on glass with various conductive layers. And I've always really thought of them just as calculator type solar panels that don't put out a lot of power, but in this case they most certainly do. While I've got the solder iron on, I shall use it for something dreadfully inappropriate and get the other one here and just stick this in the end and melt a hole right through the end. That's all it takes. And I'll just wipe the tip immediately and retin it just to make sure that plastic doesn't burn off and cause problems. Yeah, that's fine. So let's take a closer look at this. Let's get a knife and slit the sleeve. I'd be interested to see if it takes a charge. I don't think it's going to take a charge. I think it may have dried out. I think it may have oozed out its electrolyte. Can I get this off? It's kind of stuck on. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's gone black all round. It looks like it has oozed out from the seal and then gone round and corroded. So is that... The only thing I can think of that would have caused that is possibly the overcharging has just basically caused it to pressurise inside and ooze out all its electrolyte. That's not great. It also makes me wonder then, should the seal point up the way when you put it in the light so that, you know, if it does manage to break out the seal with pressure, it's just the gas is liberated. When these cells are fully charged, the whole point of nickel metal hydride is you can keep trickle charging it because... Uh, it converts the the gases that are liberated at the end of charge. The pressure builds up, gas bubbles form the electrolyte, the electrodes, and then it converts them elect chemically back into the electrolyte. It's just a continually replenishing system inside. But uh, they are they don't like being super mega overcharged. And I would say this one is probably rated for a maximum of about just a few milliamps trickle charge current. But in this case, it was probably getting. 30 or more. I mean, that, that was full sunshine. Now we've got the urge to see what these things put out in full sunshine. Um, but it was certainly, it was uh, pushing these just a little bit too much. And consider, this is a bigger the one than usually comes with them. It makes me realise that many of the other ones probably have popped their guts inside. I know I've been sent pictures for, by people from their solar lights. They opened them up and the solar the button cell had actually exploded and melted into the plastic. It kind of shows just how how much abuse they get here. Perfect for our typical average British day, but not so great for uh, super summers like we had last year. So that's uh, that's this light fixed. The silicon works. It seems stable. It doesn't seem to degrade much in the ultraviolet. It was certainly passing plenty of light to generate current. And uh, the only thing that seems to have copped it is the button cell. And these are available in packs cheaply off eBay. The little metal, metal, nickel metal hydride button cells. I think this one was rated... What is it? Um, 80 milliamp power. 1.2 volt, 80 milliamp power. But there we go. That's a, that's a success, I'd say. Not just in terms of the silicon sealing, but also, uh, but also fixing it and getting it back up and going. And the fact it was immaculate inside as well, which is always a good sign. So good result all round.